Today we're in Plainfield, New Jersey, a town that I often, city I often mention, a suburban city. And um, like every other city, every other town in America, we have our problems. I'm here with Salam Ishmael. Salam, go ahead. Hi, we're here today because in about a, in a moment we're going to have a full news conference with community leaders uh, as well as city council elected officials. Um, May of this year, uh, 2006, a gentleman was shot and killed at this location here next to the Liberty Village apartment and the uh, Joanne Hollis Gardens apartment, two public housing facilities. This is a location that, if, I mean, this, this town, if you look around this area, it don't even look like an area where you would think any kind of mayhem or mischief is occurring. But yeah, it happened here. This was the third killing, or the, or, or the, the third shooting so far this year. Now that don't, may not sound like much anywhere else in America, but for a town with less than 50,000 people, it's a big deal. And now, it's not even the largest city in Union County, now we have more murders than any other uh, city in Union County, which have 21 cities. I'm here because I'm, we're pushing a plan to do more proactive work in the area of, of gun violence and street violence. And so, this is going to be the start in the initiative. What we're going to be announcing here is, is first of all, to express outrage. That on Thursday, this Thursday at 6 p.m. at this location, at the corner of 4th and Liberty Street, we're going to start here at hitting three locations in Plainfield, expressing our outrage to the community, expressing our, our concern, and also urging people to call to action. And at, at Thursday night, there's going to be also a special city council meeting at 7.30. We're urging people to be there. Why? Because there's an opportunity for the community at large to express their outrage about violence and what to do about it. Not just talk about it, but be about it and talk and express some solutions. So that's one of the things we're going to be doing. On a state level, we're going to continue to push an effort for there to be some division on violence prevention and intervention on every county in the state. That every county in the state to have a department or a division on violence prevention and intervention. Why? Because we should not we we should not wait for these incidents to happen. It's a damn shame that all these other issues they're talking about now that is facing communities, such as the so-called heroin epidemic, which is of course is an epidemic mostly on white white Americans across the country. And there's everybody's talking about in, on that issue, including the president, the governor just issued $400 million in the state of New Jersey for programs for these, uh, uh, these kinds of um, uh, uh, medicine that can help uh, people who get uh, uh, OD from, from heroin. But again, it's an epidemic, it's a health crisis when it's, helping, when it's, when it's uh, epidemic among other people. It's just a fact. So what we're saying today is uh, violence is an epidemic, it's a pandemic. It's a, it's a crisis that has been far too long, have been vested in communities such as Plainfield, such as many other cities in New Jersey and cities around the country, Chicago, Detroit, and others. So we have to first be proactive, and that's what we're gonna do here uh, in Plainfield and other cities around the country. We actually don't just listen, don't just hear, but be proactive. Actually, I work putting up the mirror. Okay. And uh, the 
still fell off the uh, balcony, it fell off the mountain. And uh, it happened about six of them. We had to go by all the things that were going on. So, uh, it was a That was scary. with the mother of brother Willie Lee Major, 37-year-old young man who was here on May 25th, minding his own, where some sort of bullet came from somewhere, from the devil's gun, and which left him dead. This, I believe, is the third made murder. Because less than a week after that, another gentleman was shot and killed in this town. Plainfield, a, a city that represents 21, 20 other cities in the county, is now have more murders than Elizabeth right now, which have two murders. Murders cannot be commonplace 
and no city. And the whole county should be awakened to what's happening in Plainfield, New Jersey. And our task is to do just that. Willie Lee Major mom here, son had a right to live. And those bandits, those deranged individuals on that day that took his life, well, you didn't just take his life, but you took a part of life out of the entire community and the entire city of Plainfield. Before I introduce him, there's two things we're gonna be doing. This Thursday at six o'clock, we hold a series of rallies starting right here at the front of Liberty Village on this street a fourth in Liberty. We will be here. And we ask the community, if you are concerned about your community and not afraid of your community, to come out Thursday, 6 o'clock, right at this corner, rain or shine. I'll be here with my bullhorn, and I'm going in the corners, in the streets, on the blocks, in three areas of this town to speak to these young people, to speak to these, these young people and tell them that, that life is more better than evil death. Life is more better than evil death. That gun violence can only take you two places. One, to your grave or to jail. So this is unacceptable, but at the same time, we're not gonna sit by, idly by, and let young men like this lose their life. We have a responsibility as community advocates, as members of the government, at large to do something, to respond to this. It ain't about nobody home life. It ain't about anything else. It's about the peace in our community, and that's the responsibility we have. That's number one. Secondly, we also, I'm glad two members of the, the, the local government here, city council are here, because we need to also legislate some things that can, we can put into place that are gonna be more proactive. We're not gonna sit back and wait for more shootings to happen to say, well, another man died, and so what? That's not gonna happen. So we're gonna be doing multiple things in Plainfield to bring the peace of life back to Plainfield. And starting with Thursday at six o'clock is gonna be one other. Um, I have two council, councilwomen here, uh, Councilwoman Brown. Good afternoon. I just want to say on behalf of myself with Pastor Ruth Fellowship Ministries Church here in Plainfield, all is not well here in our wonderful city. We have a wonderful city, wonderful people, but all is not well. We have young people who is not understanding how important life is. And it's important that we as the community come together and let our young people know that their lives matter. Too often in this city, over the last couple of years, I've buried and eulogized too many young people. I'm just honored to be able to have Ms. Major here today and Church Ruth Fellowship Ministries is available for the homegoing service. But it's not enough just to come together for a homegoing service. We have to come together as a community and do something to stop the violence in our wonderful city. So I do encourage clergy, uh, government to officials to get involved and see what we can do to help our young people understand that their lives matter. And it's more to life than just these streets. I'm advocating that our city administration really come together to think seriously and hard about a full service youth center Youth, uh, youth training, job training, career training for our young people that they can understand there's more to life and that God has a better plan for their life. Matter of fact, the Bible says that God's plan is so good, it's a plan that they should be in good health and that they should prosper. And we need to get that message out to them. Thank you. Hi, I'm Councilwoman Bridget Rivers. I am the representative of this ward and I'm the representative of the entire city of Plainfield. Again, far too many times we have too many rallies, we have too many community events. What I want to ask the young people and the, the young men and women, what do you want to see us do? What can you do to help us to stop 
the crime. We can't continue to, you can't continue to blame local government as to what's happening here today. We have to come together. We have to ask, we have to reach out to the youth. We have to reach out to the young men and the young women in this community and ask them, what can we do to help stop this from happening? This was a good young brother. You know, far too many times I used to see him up at Stop and Shop pushing those baskets going to work. A lot of times I'm driving to work, Ms. Bridget, you gotta, you gotta help me get a job, you know? A good, a, good, a good young brother, but one of the things that he did do, he did utilize his rights in this community. So again, I'm pleading to the people in this, this great city of Plainfield, please come out to these city council meetings, come to your elected officials, come to us and let us know what can we do because we have these rallies, we have these youth conventions, and then we go right back to doing the same old thing. So something is just not working here. So we need to find out from you guys, what can we do to help you to stop the violence here in this city of Plainfield? Okay. Our task is very clear. Um, before I leave here today, I'm going to reach out to the director of the police department because um, we're going to need some cooperation. Some real serious community policing. Notice I say community policing, not policing community. And if we're going to seriously deal with this problem, um, I got a call from some folks on the ground here who said, this is not over. So I know what that means when folks on the ground tell me it's not over. That means there's a potential of more of these shootings to occur. So we have a choice to either be proactive or be inactive or be reactive. Inactive and reactive lead to no action. So that's, I'm committed. Let me tell you something now. I told, I told mom, I said, you know, when someone died in my home city in Elizabeth, innocent bystander, the first thing we did beyond what we had to do is name the dog on speed after that. All right? Because you know why? Your son had a right to live. And as long as he had a right to live, he wasn't doing nothing wrong. He worked. Even the councilwoman said she yes. worked. He was a yes, good did. young man. There's no reason. And Nick, right, when he died, all of us are responsible. We all are responsible for it. And doggone it, we all have a, have a responsibility to fix that law. And I'm going to be one. I'm gonna be, I got nieces and nephews with me. I got one niece that's four kids living here in Queens. And, and I'll be doggone. I probably won't be this civil. Okay? So we got, we got some work to do. Question? We have a lot of work. Any questions? The rally you're planning to have on Thursday, tell me a little bit more about it and, and what you're hoping to accomplish with that. Well, first, first there's going to be a call to these young folks out here. And I'm going to have my bullhorn, so I'm going to be very loud. It, that bullhorn reached a quarter of a mile, so it's going to be very loud. They're going to be talking to very strong and strict messages to these young folks that are out here in the community. I can assure you that the ones that done the shooting is they live, they live around here. So we're going to be going for various different, we're going to go to three areas of this city, the at-risk area, if you may call, and we're going to be talking. Now, I'm going to have a couple of cops with me, too. You know what I'm saying? Not in my mix, but amongst, for, for a particular purpose. And we're going to go into the village right here. We're going to go to the, uh, around that area, the community center. We're going to go to the east end where the other gentleman was killed. We're going to go into areas, and we're going to be hitting them hard. I'm going to have some very strong, trained guys with me, and I'm inviting others to join in. Nation of Islam is here. Pop, pop organization got a representative body here. You know, or any other group that's here to join us, to, to meet here at 6. So the purpose is, is to send a strong message. That's number one. The second is, is to start the trend of turning this, 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 this whole trend of violence around. And like, and make it, look. We have to make our, and I'm speaking more about community, the black community, because that's where the majority of these continued murders seem to happen. We have to be such now that violence and murders is not to have, have to be, continue to be a cornerstone of our livelihood. That just can't happen anymore. At some point, we have to come together as a community and, and, and deal with this. And I think the first 
first thing we need to do is go right into these corners and start talking to these young people. We can't expect them to come to our meetings. We can't expect them to come to our events. So we have to go right on the corner where they hang out at. And we know a few places where they hang out at. And we're going to be going there to do just that. Either one of the council women, um, with having two um, homicides back to back and one earlier this month, you know, have you asked for any increased police presence in this neighborhood or in the area? Yes, I do believe that there has been an increase of um, police presence in this area and in other areas in the city, in the city of Plainfield. My name is Dan Dunn. I'm a citizen here in the city of Plainfield. And one of the major problems that I have here, for instance, we had three homicides. Uh, one was maybe about three weeks ago. The other one was like on a, I think Thursday was it? Wednesday or Thursday, back to back. My problem is this. For whatever reason, this administration, particularly this mayor, he is, for whatever reason, playing down these major issues or they, that concern so many people to the extent where he's taken over our local television channel. For instance, for the month of uh, May, we had a uh, live uh, TV broadcast, a city council meeting, you know, where people can come and air out their views and after five days it's televised. We are not to yet to see the council meeting starting from the 9th of, that we had on May the 9th. Now, if this happens on May the 9th, you'll give you five or six days to put it together, to put it out for the general public. And I put it up on Facebook, the monthly, the, the, uh, the uh, council meeting for the month of May, which was the, the, uh, the uh, 9th of May, which rolls until the next council meeting, which is in June. We have not seen one uh, televised view of the May 9th uh, meeting. And that does not make sense to me. It seems like they're picking and choosing what they want broadcast and what they don't. Public television is supposed to come on every day, okay, until the next meeting. We have yet to see one telecast of our May City Council meeting, and I want to know why. By any chance, did you uh, look on um YouTube on the Bassa News because we covered those uh, meetings and we did place them on YouTube. No, but what, what, what I'm saying is... I understand where you're coming from in terms of the, ac the, we the television access here in Plainfield. Yes. But I'm only telling you that from uh, Bassa News that we did place all those meetings from the public hearing meetings that I was uh, uh, honored to walk with uh, Salam Ishmael, yeah. that we actually placed them on YouTube. So they are on YouTube under Bassa News. I, I understand where you come from in terms of oh, the let me, city. Let me, let me say, I want to stick to my, my I, wanna, I don't want to get confused. Every month you have a city council meeting, okay, at a set date. It's the first Monday of each month. And once we have that meeting, it's telecast every day on a uh, uh, public, uh, uh, public, uh, public TV is yeah. it's either Comcast or Verizon, whichever yeah. one you have on your cable service. Yeah. You're saying and basically I'm, the mayor is not really doing that, he's trying to downplay some of the yeah. 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 things. He is picking when he wants yeah. to put up what council let me, let me finish back my press conference because I don't want to get, get off get off the point. I want to just make, I just want, I just want to make it clear on, on, on what we're doing here. And I hope you come, I need, a, I need, hey listen. Residents, residents, six o'clock, six o'clock Thursday, we'll be here. I'm gonna bring some of my guys. They have green shirts on, and we're gonna hit corners, starting with this one. We're gonna be talking to the young brothers and the three areas of playing field this Thursday. I need men or and women who not afraid of your own people to come out on that day and talk with us. That's all we're doing, and my message is love. It ain't about hate. Even the sick-minded ones, that's what it's going to be about. So I need y'all to have me a couple of dozen folks here on 6 o'clock this Thursday. When we, when we do have these meetings like of such, you have a lot of people here who are working. 
at one o'clock in the afternoon, right after the holiday, is not a good time for a press conference to these people who are really suffering. If you schedule it at six or seven o'clock in the evening and give people ample notice, you'll have a thousand people here. These people think that they don't think, you know, they, like they Thank don't Thank you care. very much. They're treated like second class citizens. Doesn't make sense.